You guys know how we like to close it out. It's with a political panel. Christina Greer, Fordham University political scientist, and Liz Plank, a senior correspondent for Vox. Nice to see you both. Nice to see you. Um, our first topic today is our last topic. It's our sometimes seems like the only topic. It is the election that won't go away. <laughs> we were talking earlier in the show to an elector who's still saying maybe Hillary Clinton should win. And there's, there's something to at least the argument that they want to be briefed on intel given all of the stuff going on. Mm -hmm. On the politics itself, you have Harry Reid, who's, as we like to say in the business, not nobody. Um, and he has a theory about all this. Take a listen. Comey helped Trump significantly. A week before the election, he, he came out and uh, with this, oh, we got some, found some more emails. And as a result of that, we lost Senate seats. And I think we lost the presidency. Christina Greer, Harry Reid thinks he lost, they lost the presidency, his party, because of Jim Comey. Well, listen, I, I can't say I disagree with that. We know Comey and, and Giuliani go way back, and we know that it was highly inappropriate, and we know that he only targeted Hillary Clinton and not Donald Trump. I think, though, the framing could be a little more productive and sort of more factually based. So instead of just saying, I think it's Comey's fault, why doesn't he then sort of uh, use some of the information we have moving forward, especially the information that we've been able to collect in the past, say, week or two, to really make the argument for people who are possibly on the fence? Right now, uh, I think the way... Harry Reid has framed the debate makes it seem a little bit like Democratic sour grapes. Um, and I think there's enough substantive evidence out there for Democrats to actually make a full argument that uh, yeah. that Comey actually did uh, sway certain I votes. mean, to your point, Liz, there's sort of the the what would Trump do question, and then an auxiliary question is what would Trump do if he were like a young intersectional feminist? And oh my Can I see that movie? Yeah, I well, would love to see that. <laughs> Donald Trump, if he won by two and a half million votes right. and some rigged system denied him the presidency, that's all we would hear about. It would be a very robust, mm -hmm. confident argument. We know that because he started making it um, before, well before, he, right. <laughs> before he did win the Electoral right. College and lose the popular mm -hmm. vote. So is there some message or lesson there for Democrats who seem to not know how to sell the fact that they had the first woman nominee and she won Two and a half more million votes. Right. I mean, remember he said he would keep us in suspense uh, about what he would do if, if he would lose the election. And, and I think your point about the Electoral College is, is really important. Um, the Electoral College was created almost as if Alexander Hamilton was able to predict a man like Donald Trump came to, hmm. taking power. Not only does it talk about the qualifications, but there's also a portion that says, you know, it wants to protect the highest office against the desire in foreign powers to gain an improper ascendant in our councils. Hmm. The story that's happening with uh, the, the Russian hacking right now, which you've covered brilliantly during the show, um, is, 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 is another reason to put pressure on the Electoral College to, to, to really act and, and to fulfill its constitutional duty as an institution. Your time quoting, is ticking away. And you're quoting the Federalist Papers here, yes. which is, uh, you know, it's a good day. I want to go to Governor Chris Christie, who turned down several positions in the Trump administration, at least according to leaks to NewJersey.com. Those jobs included DHS and the Department of Veterans Affairs and apparently an ambassadorship to Italy. Christie's current approval ratings in New Jersey are now in the high teens. Discuss. He's, I mean, Chris Christie is too toxic to be in this already toxic administration. I mean, I think, you know, Chris Christie could be looking at prison time. Most people don't think that he'll make it because, unfortunately, all of the people who work underneath him are going away for uh, 10 and 20 yeah, years. And, and the he, prosecutors never of named course. him as an and, and co He also knows the law, and that's why he never put anything in emails. But it's very clear that all these direct orders were from him. And so I think, you know, in a in a administration that's already completely plagued by scandal, um, no votes of confidence, right. uh, uh, miscellaneous uh, individuals coming and going. I think that Chris Christie is just one one more clown in the clown car that just actually does not need to be there. Um, right. Although, again, legally, uh, if anything, the investigation helps him because it's fingered other people and not him. Briefly, we want to show you <laughs> Donald Trump says he's going to decorate his office with some Nixon memorabilia. Take a look. Mrs. Nixon told me that you were great on the Donahue show. As you can imagine, she is an expert on politics. And she predicts that whenever you decide to run for office, you will be a winner. With warm regards, sincerely, Dick. Political reporting, that letter from Richard Nixon is going to hang in the White House to Donald Trump. That's, uh, that's it. very interesting. Um, look, the people that, that Donald Trump sort of surrounds himself with and the people that he praises um, is, gives us a lot of information about Donald Trump. Uh, he likes Nixon. He likes Putin. Uh, all of the evidence that we're getting uh, you know, from the CIA and the FBI is important evidence. But we knew that Donald Trump had close ties to, 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 to Putin, and right. he likes these kinds of characters. So 
All right. It's, also it's a foreshadowing. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're looking forward to that whole Brady Bunch presentation of all the people. Christina Greer, Liz Plank, thank you so much.